Okay, everybody, here we go. Part two, the part that everybody dreads and everybody worries about actually shooting the wedding. Okay, so let me start by saying that everybody shoots their weddings a little bit differently, but these are the tips that I've found that have helped me in my experience, and hopefully they can help you. Feel free to modify this a little bit if you want, but this is what's worked for me, and at some point I hope to do a video vlog where I'm actually going through the actual day of filming. But for now, hopefully this will help. So let's go ahead and get going. Okay, so it's the big day. You're probably feeling a little bit nervous, and that's okay because you've got a plan in place. So you wanna get there, this is tip number one, you wanna get there a little bit early, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, just to get your bearings. Uh, just like you're going to a job interview, you kinda of wanna get comfortable with the venue, have a look around, make sure you know where everything is, the, where the wedding ceremony is taking place, the reception, and then after that, go ahead and touch base with the couple and just say, hey, you know, I hope you're ready for your big day. You know, let them know of any plans you have. And then after that, just kind of leave them alone. They're gonna have a really busy day. Leave them alone for a minute so that they can get their bearings. They're probably nervous themselves. So, and just leave them alone for a second. And then we'll come back to them because you're gonna be dealing with them a lot throughout the day. But you can go off and get, we'll talk about that in a minute, is going and getting your establishing videography, you know, and drone uh, videography. We'll talk about that in just a minute in the next tips. Tip number two is check over your equipment do a quick equipment check just to make sure everything's in working order, make sure your batteries are good to go. You got plenty of SD card space. If you need to, go ahead and format them. And then from there, you have to decide where to house your equipment. So what I do is I sometimes will set up a base camp somewhere in the groomsmen parlor or that's somewhere that's out of the way where you can keep your gear if you need to get to it. Or you can just keep it in your car. But it's important that if you're going to do that, um, I would recommend that you definitely set that gear in a place that's out of sight and out of the way. You do not want your equipment just walking off. That is kind of a worst nightmare for a lot of people. Don't let it happen to you. Okay, so next tip. Moving on, the part that everybody wants to get to know, the part that everybody wants to know about is shooting. So let's get into it. Okay, so the part that everybody wants to know is how do you actually shoot a wedding? And that's a little easier said than done because everybody does it a little bit differently. And from here on out, I'm gonna be using my own methodology of the way that I shoot weddings. Feel free to modify this if you want. But I always start with aerial videography first. I start with the drone. And then what I do from there is I get establishing shots. Anything that it, uh, doesn't involve actual people. Uh, shots of the venue, outside of the venue, um, decorations that people are putting up, anything like that. Okay, tip number four is get the bride getting ready. So this is something that I wish somebody had told me when I started shooting weddings, but the minute that that bride goes into the makeup chair, it, it's on all the way to the ceremony. The clock is ticking. Okay, so you wanna get her getting put up, makeup put on. Some videographers wait until they're more halfway. Uh, I like to get a progression when they just sat down in the, to the makeup chair and then I kind of go in the midway and then I get when they're done. Up to you. Another thing is that the, this is a great opportunity for them to say anything to camera if they have letters that uh, they wanna read to each other. That's a great opportunity. And that's another note in this is that uh, overall it's very important that the bride and groom talk a lot as much as you can get them to talk because that's going to help you in the edit later tip number five and again going back to the overall theme here of communication you want to communicate with four people throughout the day you want to communicate with the couple so the bride and groom you also wanna communicate with the wedding planner and you wanna communicate with the photographer. Or if there's multiple photographers, then communicate with all of them. You need to communicate with all these people throughout the day on what your plans are. You don't have to tell them every single thing that you're doing, but if there's a specific shot that you need and you have it scheduled out, 
then you need to make everyone aware of that. Because it's important, and this was discussed somewhat in part one, it's important to uh, be respectful of what the photographers need and also trying to, at the same time, you want to get the shots that you need. And if you need a shot, then communicate that to them. You know, say, hey, I just, I need to borrow her for uh, 10 minutes. Uh, I need to take the couple, you know, aside to do a, a quick shoot. And typically they'll be very cool with that. Tip number six, and this is another overall note, is keep your cool at all times. A wedding day can be extremely stressful and hectic, and if something goes wrong, try your best to keep a cool head. So what you wanna do is, in a opposition to photography, where you have to do formal poses and things are very, very uh, kind of rigid and structured, videography is kind of the opposite. And basically what you want is that the, you want to make sure that the couple is as comfortable and as relaxed as humanly possible. You want to capture all the emotion that they're feeling candidly. It's not like photography where they set up, you know, in certain poses and they, you know, kind of grin uh, at, at, you know, in certain, and do certain smiles and do all kinds of things to make sure that they get the right pictures. That's not what you're supposed to do. You can post them in certain ways if you want, but you just, overall, you just want them to relax. If there's nothing else you get from this, from this uh, vlog, then just make sure that you understand that, you know, tell them that you want them to relax, act like the camera isn't even there. That's what I often tell a couple is, you know, just do what comes naturally, relax, and enjoy your day and you're gonna capture good footage just by them interacting and having fun and smiling at each other. You can get candid footage of, uh, you know, for example, if the bride is sitting in the makeup chair and just tell her, hey, you know, I'm not even here. Just act like I'm not here. You can, may, you can smile a little bit if you want to, but just relax. And you'll, you'd be surprised how good the footage is. Tip number seven, get the groom getting ready whenever he gets there. You wanna start uh, with him, you know, putting on his jacket, uh, buttoning up his shirt, tightening up his bow tie, get all that stuff. Him, him putting on his shoes, get whatever you possibly can. Oh, and as another note, you wanna turn off all the lights. I, that's, a problem, that's the next tip I'm gonna get to, is you turn off all the lights in the groomsman parlor, get him up next to a window, and you're good to go. This is also a perfect opportunity, again, for him to say something because you never know if they're gonna wanna watch this decades into the future. This is, this is their opportunity to say something to their fiance that you know, they might wanna watch years and years into the future and it's your chance to capture it. So just kinda go, hey, is there anything you wanna say? If they have a letter to each other or a gift that they gave each other, even better. Tip number eight, and this is another overall note, a little bit more on the technical side. Natural lighting is going to be your best friend throughout these shoots. Whenever you go into the groomsman parlor or the bridesmaids parlor or wherever you are, and I've mentioned this before, but turn off all the lights because the natural fixtures that are actually, that have been put in place in, uh, in interiors domestically, they're actually going to, that, that actually would hurt your photography. So go ahead and shut all those off, get them up next to a window. Now, recently I shot a wedding where I got the bride right up in front of a window so that she was in silhouette and it's probably, I made a point to shut off all the lights in this place, specifically so I could get this one shot. And it's probably one of the better shots that I've gotten at a wedding. So that's my overall note uh, from a technical standpoint is just turn off all the lights uh, on the interiors, you know, keep your ISO low and your footage is gonna look great. Those shots are gonna make your video shine and look so much better than a lot of other videographers out there. Tip number nine, another overall note, you wanna be as light 
and as mobile as humanly possible. You want to be able to move around with freedom of movement, with your range of movement. You want to be able to get into tight corners and spaces with your gimbal or whatever you've got on you. And you want to be able to have whatever you need right on your person. If you have another tripod that's lightweight, perfect, or a monopod, even better, you know, just keep that to the side and grab your gimbal and you can, you're good to go. You can move about anywhere you want. Another thing is that I keep this pouch on my side, right here on my belt, and I'll keep batteries, uh, ND filters, uh, anything like that, you know, lens cloths right there so that if I need to grab a battery, you know, if the camera battery is getting low, then all I gotta do is, you know, unzip and there we go. Very, very handy. Some people carry entire like leather notched pouches like, you know, like Batman right there on their belt. You can do that. But I would highly recommend that you do something like this so that it's just gonna make it easier to carry around your batteries as opposed to carrying around and, you know, just your pocket. And uh, yeah, the more light and mobile you are, the happier you're gonna be because if you're encumbered by, you know, heavy equipment carrying it around all day, by the time you actually get to the end of the day, you're gonna be so exhausted, you're not even gonna be able to function. So what you wanna do is you wanna be light, mobile, and functional. Okay, so tip number 10 is that once you get into the thick of shooting, it's gonna get real busy. You're not gonna stop moving the entire day. And just stick to your shooting schedule and keep watching your shot list and just keep on knocking them out, one after the other. Just keep on looking at your schedule, keep on looking at your shot list. If you get one, you cross it out. Any of the must-have shots that I consider absolutely necessary, I put in the actual blog. I can link that below, but you'll want to go ahead and just knock off as much as you can. There are some shots that are pretty much unmissable. Uh, for example, you know, cutting the cake. That's just one shot that you cannot miss it. I mean, that's something that is absolutely necessary in the grand context of things. That's just one shot though. So go ahead and just follow along your schedule. You know, thankfully you planned that before and you now you're gonna just pop them off one at a time. And that way your day is gonna go so much smoother, like we talked about in part one, and you're gonna be so much happier that you planned all that out. And as you go along and you get more experienced, you'll get to where you kind of get into a rhythm and you kind of just, you kind of already know what shots you need. You know, if it's first looks between bride and groom, you pretty much already know how to how to shoot that you know you have your second shooter on uh, getting one reaction and then you have yourself uh, doing the reverse getting the other so uh, just follow along with your schedule and you and you'll just be ju you'll be just fine bonus tip is keep your wedding vendors in mind so for example the the vendor that provided the cake Okay, well, you're planning to get a shot of the wedding cake already, I'm sure. So why not get them, you know, setting it up on the table? You can credit them at the end and all your vendors, you know, the reception band, the, the people that did uh, the florals and decorations, the venue, all these guys worked really hard to make sure that, you know, that this couple's wedding day went flawlessly. So why not credit them at the end? I think it's a really, first of all, you know, it's, they're gonna appreciate the free advertising. And then second, you never know, they may wanna recommend you to another couple. So just a, it's a really good practice. And throughout the day, kind of keep that in mind is, oh, well, you know, they're setting up flowers at, uh, at the ceremony, um, at the chapel. Why not get some shots of them setting up flowers? And then you can credit, credit them at the end. Really good practice. Who man, that was a big blog post, but that's to be expected. This is usually the part that people put the most emphasis on because after all, this is the result that people are going to ultimately see. 
Now on the next part, we're gonna talk about the third part of this series, what to do after you've actually shot the wedding. And that part, I'm not gonna to go too far into specifics of you know workflow and technicalities. I would say more so we're gonna talk about as far as communicating with your couple. Again, communication, but you wanna make sure that you're communicating with your couple throughout this entire process, including editing. Okay, so that wraps it up for this blog post. And we'll see you on the next one when we, when we talk about the after the shoot. Okay, well, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.